uh, uh, 12.07 is not bad for Steph time. Um, in a short while, I will be joined by Luis Carrillo, who's here, the UN police advisor. Uh, and we are joined virtually by Isufu Yakuba, the police commissioner for the UN peacekeeping force in Mali. And we will also be joined by the senior police advisor for the UN interim security force in Abyei, uh, Mary Gahonziri. And the three of them will brief you on uh, police week. Uh, and we'll get to them as soon as we're done uh, with the SG's announcements. Uh, as you saw this morning, uh, we issued a statement on Myanmar in which the Secretary General said he will follow the upcoming general elections uh, on November 8th. He notes that the, up the holding of peaceful, orderly, and credible elections is an important opportunity to help advance inclusive, sustainable development, humanitarian action, human rights, and democratic reforms, including civilian control over the military. He hopes it will also help pave the way for refugees to return home in dignity and safety. The Secretary General renews his appeal for a ceasefire across the country to allow us to focus on combating the COVID-19 pandemic. He remains concerned about armed conflict in many areas of Myanmar, especially the intensifying clashes in Rakhine and Chin states, which continue to take a heavy toll on vulnerable civilians. The Secretary General urges all parties to the armed conflict to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law to protect civilians, to protect civilian infrastructure. Unimpeded humanitarian access for the United Nations and its partners is crucial. Also at this juncture, a critical juncture for the people of Myanmar, the Secretary General reaffirms the support of the United Nations in their pursuit of lives of dignity and peace. And the Secretary General this morning began a virtual meeting of the Chief Executive's Board of the UN System, the body that brings together the heads of UN uh, agencies and organizations across the system. The purpose of this session is to reflect on the main characteristics of a post-pandemic world and brainstorm on possible key elements of a common agenda, report that the Secretary General has been asked to submit to the General Assembly. The Secretary General is also discussing the pandemic with a focus on the risks for human rights, global economic prospects, deepening inequalities and climate action. Among other topics, he will also discuss the key priority of combating sexual exploitation and abuse within the UN and across the system. And turning to Ethiopia, I just want to flag that you may have seen that the High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, Michel Bachelet, today called on all relevant actors to de-escalate the volatile situation in the Tigray region and to engage in an inclusive dialogue and resolve grievances without resorting to violence. She urged all sides to halt the violence to avoid additional loss of life, mass displacement, and further destabilization. Ms. Bachelet expressed concern about the restrictions imposed on the people of Tigray, including human, the rights of freedom of movement and freedom of expression and added that she's concerned at reports of armed assailants assaulting members of the Amhara ethnic group in the Oromia region on Sunday. Her full statement is online. Uh, for his part, the Secretary General, as I've been telling you, has been working the phones. He spoke to the chair of the African, uh, chairperson of the African Union, Moussa Faki, the Prime Minister of Sudan, Mr. Hamdok, in his capacity as the head of EGAD. He's also spoken to his envoys, uh, Mr. Parfait Onyanga, who's the envoy for the Horn of Africa, as well as Hana Tete, his representative at the, um, uh, at the African uh, Union. And I've also been asked about uh, Kosovo and the indictments in, um, in the indictments, and I can say that we have noted the reports of the confirmation by the Kosovo Specialist Chambers of indictment against President Hash ha Hashim Thaci and other individuals in Kosovo on charges filed by the Special Prosecutor's Office and the President's subsequent resignation. Continued respect for due process and full cooperation with the Special Prosecutor's Office and the Kosovo Specialist Chambers is essential. The Kosovo Specialist Chambers are an important demonstration of Kosovo's commitment to the fundamental principles of justice and accountability in addressing the difficult legacy of the past. A uh, couple of quick reports to flag. The UN Children's Fund and WHO today issued an urgent call to action to avert major measles and polio epidemics as COVID-19 continues to disrupt immunization services worldwide. UN agencies warn that this is leaving millions of vulnerable children at heightened risks of uh, preventable childhood diseases. 
the two agencies estimate that $655 million is needed to address the immunity gap in non-GAVI eligible countries and target uh, groups. The polio transmission, of both agencies noted, is expected to increase in Pakistan and Afghanistan and in many under-immunized areas of Africa. Failure to eradicate polio now would lead to a global resurgence, resurgence of the disease, resulting in as many as 200,000 new cases annually within 10 years. And uh, another note on, um, on COVID and, and what our UN colleagues are doing in the field to help. Um, our, excuse me, um, this time from Kenya, where our team is being led by the resident coordinator, Siddhar Chatterjee, and they are working uh, to help refugees and host communities in Torcana County in the country's northwest, despite the ongoing pandemic. Uh, the area of the country has seen a 50% increase in the number of refugees in the past seven years. The UN team has helped to provide more than 50 medical facilities staffed by 300 trained workers, to help nearly 200,000 refugees and 320,000 people from host communities to address the pandemic. More than 120 schools are also in place. The government and UN agencies have worked to provide cash for refugees to build their own permanent shelters and have bank accounts. And a new report from World Food Program and its sister agency, the Food and Agriculture Organization, warns that four countries have areas that could uh, soon slip into famine if conditions continue to deteriorate. The countries are Burkina Faso, uh, Nigeria, the northeastern part of Nigeria, South Sudan, and Yemen. The early warning analysis of acute food insecurity hotspots, that's the name of the report, says that these countries, a toxic combination of conflict, economic decline, climate extremes, and the pandemic are driving people deeper into the emergency phase of food insecurity. Uh, the full report is online. And today, uh, for those of you who didn't know, is the International Day of Preventing and Explo uh, for Preventing the Exploitation of the Environment in War and Armed Conflict. In his message for the day, the Secretary General said that while climate disruption and environmental degradation are not direct cause of conflict, they can worsen conflict risks, degradation of natural resources and ecosystem, adds to the challenges faced by communities who are already vulnerable to the short and long term, he said, with women and girls being disproportionately affected. That message has been shared with you. Also on climate, I want to flag that on Monday, the high-level champions for glo global climate action, uh, mainly Nigel Topping of the UK and Gonzalo Munoz from Chile, are convening a race to zero dialogue. The race to zero dialogue will serve as input into the climate dialogues of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, which will take place from the 23rd to the 4th of December. Together, both dialogues will set the stage for the anniversary of the Paris Agreement on December 12th, which uh, is also the day of the Climate Ambition Summit. The events are being hosted across multiple time zones, allowing speakers from all over the world to reflect on progress made on mitigation and adaptation. More information on the UNFCCC website. Staying also on climate change, the Department of Global Communications is launching a campaign to empower kids to take climate action and protect the planet. The Climate Action Superheroes campaign launching on UN social media platforms uh, will target young people under the age of 12 as agents of change. Eight superheroes, the energy expert, the fashion fixer, the fume fighter green guide, uh, the recycle ranger, the truth talker, that's me, um, the veggie vindicator, uh, and the water wizard will engage children and parents in fun missions on topics such as reducing single-use plastic, saving energy, water, fi water fixing and reusing clothes, eating more vegetables, sharing scientific facts, campaign materials include downloadable activity sheets, certificates of completion, animated social media cards, and a lot of stickers, which are always fun. And on Monday, here in this uh, room, there will be, well, rather not in this room, but there will be a virtual press briefing at 12.30 on the 15th Internet Government Forum under the theme Internet for Human Resilience and Solidarity. Speakers will include Liu Jiemin, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, along with Y. Uh, Min Kwok, Senior Governance and Public Administration Officer, and Chengetai Masango, Program Officer in the Department of Social and Economic Affairs. Uh, and before we go to our guests, I'm happy to take entertain questions from all of you. Uh, Iftikhar, please. 
and then Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, I was a bit late and uh, heard part of the Secretary General's statement on the elections in Myanmar, but uh, I want to ask you whether UN is involved in monitoring the elections? No, we are not involved in monitoring the um, elections. We do not, uh, we have no election monitors in the elections. Okay, Edie. Um, I have a Myanmar question also, yep. but a different one. Is the Secretary General concerned that hundreds of thousands of Rohingya still living in Rakhine um, are not able to vote in this election because they do not have citizenship? Yes, I, it's clear that uh, the, the legal um, limbo of a large number of people in Rakhine State uh, remains a concern. It is important that uh, everyone have a voice and be able to participate uh, in this in these elections um, in a uh, in a very much in an inclusive uh, way because the elections themselves, as, I, as the Secretary General said, uh, are an important opportunity to help advance inclusive, sustainable development, humanitarian action, human rights, and democratic reforms. And we very much hope that these elections will pave the way for the return of refugees in safety and dignity. Okay, uh, any other questions? Let me look at the chat. Uh, 